Hi guys, so today uh, I would like to show you how you can uh, actually find uh, bugs into like uh, Ethereum smart contracts. So uh, as some of you might know, uh, I was doing uh, like reversing and smart contract uh, vulnerability assessment and fuzzing uh, a long time ago. And uh, basically I'm starting to play uh, a bit more with that. And uh, today's goal will be to find the, uh, the actual vulnerability in this specific smart contract. So it really simple, uh, but for that, we're going to use uh, one and maybe the only feather available uh, in uh, Ethereum. And uh, the, this feather is named uh, Echinda. So it's a feather developed by um, Trail of Bits, the, the company and the team. And uh, basically, the main idea will be to, uh, as usual with fuzzing, generate some data and try to find out uh, if uh, there is anything wrong uh, that can uh, happen. So let me uh, show you, uh, first of all, all you, what you will need uh, in order to um, get started. So in terms of installation, it's pretty easy. You have everything right there. Uh, you just need to use like pip3 install and so on. I'm cloning, uh, I already cloned the repository locally because I will need uh, one example. And then usually uh, I'm uh, directly downloading the, uh, pre -com the already compiled binary uh, directly available on uh, GitHub. So in that case, it's uh, those command lines. So uh, once it's done, uh, I will get the uh, Echina test. So it will be uh, my, uh, my binary. Um, so let me uh, run that and you will see. So uh, I'm getting the, the usage of the command line and then I can uh, start to play with that. So the first thing, uh, just to give you a, a, an idea uh, of how it, Echina is working, uh, I will do a simple test using the Echina example solidity exercise testme.sol. So let me just run that. And what you will see is actually the Echina um, graphical interface. So uh, right now we have like the fuzzing with the, the actual number of testes that are done. So it's fuzzing, it's random, uh, it's not like, like a classical database or something. And what we can see is actually uh, the naming of the function. We have Echina uh, both done and Echina can lower second and this one actually failed and we have the call sequence. So that's something really important, especially on uh, Ethereum smart contract. Usually, when you will get vulnerability, it will be because of a sequence of command and not mandatory, like uh, based on, on the input of the function. Uh, it's also, of course, possible to do that. But the tricky part will be that um, those functions right there are actually functions created by the uh, auditor in that case. So let me show you the testme.sol. So that's this uh, Solidity uh, smart contract. And what we can see is the contract is a canal right there. There is two uh, private Boolean. There is one function named lower and one function named raise. And right after we have the Echina both done and the Echina can lower second. And the reason Echina is able to fuzz this smart contract is actually because of those functions. So that's actually what is for me the, the biggest downside of Echina is the fact that you will need to provide and specify the different um, invariant uh, that you want to check. Um, there is no like, or maybe they are in like the, the paid version. I think there is kind of a paid version, but basically, um, for what I saw, there is no way uh, to just ask Echina to, okay, try to do whatever you want in terms of calls with, uh, with the different inputs and so on. Um, and uh, just tell me when there is something wrong that is happening or even just like, a, I don't know, or to, like if there is any way to trigger like a revert um, or um, if there is any way to uh, withdraw the phone and so on, um, it will not, it will not just be possible to provide the smart contract and let Echina do the, do the work. Uh, it will not be as easy. You will need to implement some invariant um, for Echina to know what it will need to test uh, against and what it will need to detect. So that's for me the, the, a bit of the downside uh, because I think at least for like the most generic 
some of the most generic vulnerability, it will be possible to, to, to have some default invariant that will not require some manual work uh, on that. So uh, that's interesting. And as you can see, so in that case, this one was uh, failing uh, because, uh, I mean, at some point, um, this one lower true, raise true, return. So uh, this stuff may be returned like false or something like that. Uh, based on that, and uh, it should always return uh, true. So that's the that's the idea for this uh, tiny example. Uh, so that's the the famous H9 variant I uh, discuss uh, about. You they need to start with the the naming H9, and um, I mentioned previously about this specific example. So it's an example I took directly from not so smart contract uh, repository. So that contains a bunch of a vulnerable smart contract in uh, Ethereum. And actually, this one is pretty famous. Uh, it's uh, basically the vulnerability that was uh, inside the Rubixi uh, source code, the Rubixi smart contract a long time ago. And the main idea is uh, that um, basically this one can look like the constructor of the smart contract, but it's actually not the case. And uh, because the naming are different, um, instead of missing, it will be um, I am missing. So it's like uh, you, you need to remember that it's an old version of Solidity language. Uh, in that case, they added a bunch of stuff to prevent that. But basically, just keep in mind that usually this function should be like the constructor uh, because only the constructor will uh, call the owner equal message sender. So the vulnerability in that specific case is the fact that um, it shouldn't be possible for someone else to get the ownership of the contract by just calling a function, and that's the case right there. So if I'm providing this smart contract as it to HNR, it will just tell me that uh, there is, um, I mean, it will, it will not be able to do anything for me, I suppose. So we can actually uh, do it right now. So let me call that um, missing uh, miss.sol. So miss.sol. And if I'm calling uh, HNA on it, you will see that uh, I will get some, uh, some error telling me that um, there is no test found in the ABI. So there is no HNA testes HNA invariant found directly on the on the on the ABI on all the functions available. So that's why basically uh, why I modify this smart contract in order to be compliant, in order to test something. And in that case, what I have done is uh, I basically hard code hard coded a value inside like the uh, address of the owner. So in that case, I put this specific uh, address. And um, I create a testing function for HNR. And what um, this function will test is that the owner is always this specific address. So my main goal will be to detect any cases that will uh, make the ownership to change to something else uh, than uh, this specific address. So let's call uh, HNR and see if he is uh, actually able to detect these specific cases. So we are calling the missing.sol. And uh, if we are running that, let me just put that right there. We can see that he actually detect something. HNR change owner failed. So the, the test cases fail. And uh, we need to use this specific call sequence. So we need to call the I am missing function in order to make this test to, to fail. So as you can see, it's really not really complicated. Uh, of course, there is way more um, interesting example on other, um, other cases uh, available. So basically, inside the HNA example, you have a bunch of them. Uh, you can see like some, some flags right there, uh, but uh, it's actually not the, the most interesting. You can see some um, tokens. Uh, like a bad ERC20 dot sol, so really interesting since it will be based on like the, the real ERC20. Um, and uh, you will see uh, the HNA test. And as you can see in that case, uh, we are looking at the total supply, okay? The total supply of Alice, Bob, and Eve um, should be e equal to the init supply. So if there is anything that will trigger that, 
uh, it's gonna be um, gonna be uh, considered as a, a fail of the of the unit test. So I will let you uh, play with this one um, and see which result you you get uh, and so on. But um, yeah, you need to remember that um, if you are going into like fuzzing and like solidity, Ethereum smart contract uh, vulnerability and fuzzing, you will need to write some tests. So something that can uh, make sense, as I mentioned, is to uh, maybe create a bunch of um, invariant um, to detect some kind of vulnerability. In that case, you are detecting that um, you don't want to have any um, change of the ownership. Um, so that could be something uh, interesting to see if your smart contract is not vulnerable to um, this kind of vulnerability, like um, um, unprotected um, ownership of the smart contract and so on. Uh, and maybe you can just create some, some other one, like verifying that the total supply is uh, the, the same, uh, like it's not possible to withdraw any token and so on. That's the kind of stuff that can uh, make sense. But of course, you will need to customize the smart contract before uh, coding uh, HN. So uh, I hope you uh, appreciate this uh, tiny video regarding like Ethereum smart contract. Um, if you want, as usual, you have all the source code and everything directly uh, on my uh, website. And uh, let me know uh, which other video you would like to see, uh, especially on Ethereum and so on. I'm planning to, to do a bit more of a blockchain um, security and blockchain fuzzing uh, video since it's something that I'm doing uh, like on, on a day-to-day -day basis for some of my clients. So uh, let me know if it's something you would like to see and uh, see you uh, next time. Bye.